This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Yeah, today we're sitting in the middle of the hurricane called Sabine. Hey, Leon. Hey. How was the way to work today? Well, my subway was 10 minutes late, but it was about all the inconvenience I had to suffer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. How it was for you? <laughs> well, it's just, just a couple of minutes for me, uh, so no, no problems at all. Yep. Uh, even on the bicycle. But uh, some colleagues actually didn't make it to the office. True. Okay. Or got stranded somewhere. Okay, so, uh, dear listeners, when you hear this, uh, it's all the past. Hopefully, no, no further issues. But uh, let's uh, start the Modicast. Today, this interview is with a good friend of mine, uh, Sebastian Eisenberger, who is uh, a German living in France these days, as I learned in the interview. Oh. Other things we talk about is a bit of the history of Mordic, because he was a really early adapter. The HubSpot and Mordic integration, his Need.me project, and in general, tools versus brains and marketing automation. Yeah. So Excited, yeah. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Um, in the Mordic world, there has been a little bit of things going on, like always, in the last 14 days. Yeah. Most importantly, the... 2.16 beta arrived as scheduled just after the, uh, the podcast yeah, went podcast, live. Yeah. Exactly. And we're using it here and there in, in development. We're not using it in production, of course. No. And uh, also there's no conf confirmed release date for the 2.16, but so far it looks good and feels good. We're looking forward to it. Yeah. Then um, I had another discussion with uh, Matthias Reich, who is another member in, in the German Mordic community and good friend of mine too. Um, and we talked about, or, or it was spawned by forum discussions about the perfect double opt-in campaign, mm. where, as many of you know, there are two things um, that you want to achieve. One is the email goes out to the user immediately without any delay. Yeah. And the other thing is, of course, you want to be able to track whether the, the opt-in is given in, in technical terms, the user has clicked the opt-in and has reached the confirmation page or thank you page or whatever. That's the typical way to track, clicks a link or visits a page. And in that case, we assume, yeah, the opt-in is given. Now, if we use a campaign, uh, it's bit tricky because a campaign cannot check what user what what pages a user clicked in the past those user decisions like clicks a link visits a url opens an email etc are always in the future from from the perspective of the campaign step um so if the scenario is email goes out immediately user clicks a confirmation after a while the campaign fires up by cron and gets started and, and now starts looking where the user is, is visiting the url it's never going to happen and we are in trouble so what can we do yeah um, what can we do what can we do <laughs> the the hack that Mat matthias came up with is this um use the uh, or send the email from the form directly mm -hmm. and set up the the confirmation page to set a tag uh, for the user. Oh. Tags in Mordic can be set, set multiple ways. One is to just have a bit of HTML in the website that sets a tag and um, or, or in the plugin, whatever. Um, and so the user opens the email, goes to the page, a tag is set. And then when, when eventually the campaign is triggered and comes to a condition does the user have that tag set? Mm -hmm. Then it's going to wait for the defined duration and is able to see what happened in the future because we're not looking at a user decision, we're looking at a user property. Uh, so that's called the, the condition. So that is working and uh, is, to me, the perfect double opt-in campaign. Pretty smart, I've got to say. Yeah, it's, 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 it's still is a workaround, but but it does a good job. And uh, thank you, Matthias, for the tip. Yeah, shout out. Yeah, we'll have a knowledge base article on that and a link to it in the show notes, like always. 
Yeah, and I came across an interesting plugin. It's called a Clear Cache plugin and was released by Greg White. And what it does is pretty simple set. It is a plugin which lets you uh, clear the model cache via an option in the backend. So there are people who do not have uh, access to the console. Yeah, just like with the cron thing yeah, that we had before. Exactly. Yeah. And if you are a person and you need to clear the cache in Modic for whatever reason you encounter, you just can go into the backend and under options you now have like the uh, button to clear the cache and you click it, your cache gets cleared. Mm -hmm. So did Easy. you try that? Oh no, I did not yet. So oh. I don't know if it like fully works or if there are like, technical issues left. But uh, I will go on and try it and... If you out there, a listener, tried it already, you can give us feedback if it works and if it worked for you or if you encountered any problems, we're happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, and uh, nonetheless, thanks to Greg White and his company, um, yeah. you, you'll find it on their website. It's, uh, yeah, I need to fill in a form, I, I think, really. Mm -hmm. It's not on on GitHub or something, but nonetheless, thanks for providing the, the plugin. We'll uh, take a look at it. Now, next up, uh, Ruth has been traveling once again. She went to FOSDEM, as we uh, talked about last week. Yeah, in Brussels, yeah. Yeah, and uh, came back and was really excited about all the interested uh, interested people um, and all the, the interest she experienced there. Yeah, nice. And it's really another confirmation that real-life events are not dead. Uh, to the opposite... It is a really good chance to spread the word, to tell people about it who never heard about Mordic or ne not even heard about the concept of marketing automation because they are in related spaces. So it is different, it, it is different but it's still interesting for them and it's uh, good to have uh, multipliers and to let them spread the word too. Oh yeah. So... As a result, we're now thinking about more shows to attend. I mean, we, we did that before, of course, but it's another confirmation that it makes sense. Yeah. So we only need to figure out figure out what shows to attend and, of course, um, who should go there. So if you, dear listener, are considering getting in touch with, with Mordic, with Mordic community more, then that's another perfect chance yeah, to, um, to become more of a part of Mordic yourself to network with other people. Mm -hmm. If you are at, at a booth with, together with other morticians, you spend a day or two or three or whatever time you can effort um, and you really make friends, you, you have really deep conversations and, and uh, you have a starting point for much more to come. Oh, yes. And the other thing is all the conversations that you have with visitors is really enlightening it, it is um you learn what 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 the customer what, what language like really they, they they speak uh what, where they are from from knowledge perspective perspective what their focus of interest is and so on so it's such a tremendous opportunity to learn about our field um i'm i'm going to do that as, as often as possible in the future yeah that's a force them And now let's go to the interview with Sebastian. Here we go. Okay, today I'm really excited to welcome one of the very early adapters of Mordic on the show, and that is Sebastian Eisenberger. Hello, Sebastian. Welcome. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to be here. Yeah, thanks for your time today. We're recording this in, in the middle of a big storm in, in, uh, in Europe. That's Sabine. Are you affected by Sabine? No, I'm here in the south of France, so nothing to see. We have the best weather here, 20 oh. degrees, I would say. Oh, okay. And, um, yeah, I have a Sorry. lot of beautiful mountains and Saint Victoire between Marseille and Aix en Provence. Oh, that's good for you. But, but normally you're located in Stuttgart, right? In Germany? No, no. I'm located here. I have two companies in Stuttgart, but I'm oh. working completely location independent, so um, it doesn't matter where I am. I have my office here in France. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy it. Really, okay, really nice so, so un unless the windows uh, are broken by the storm here, let's just ignore that. <laughs> and <laughs> let's uh, talk about you and about Mordic. Uh, when and how did you discover Mordic? 
Yeah, my, my first steps in marketing automation, it was 2010. So, yeah, it's 10 years ago. I have a yeah, 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 happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, I had a, my, my own company. It was an e-commerce company in Stuttgart. Um, and we sold medical equipment for doctors, for students, for, um, yeah, for other medical um, stuff. Yeah. And I asked myself, what can I do to be either and to be different yeah, to all the other yeah, um, e-commerce shops? And there was about, I could say we had four, five or six um, competitors. And uh, yeah, I wanted to be different. And uh, marketing automation was a big topic in the US. And I started to discover it and read a lot blogs and um, yeah, the first YouTube videos um, could be found then. And um, yeah, 2010, I developed my own open source marketing automation stack, I would say. It was a very simple system. Um, it was a CMS, a BPM system, a PIM system, and a CRM. So we had five open source systems connected via um, yeah, the BPM software in the middle. And it worked more or less well, I would say. And um, after some years, yeah, I tried to, tried to find yeah, professional software to do that. And um, we had a lot of large softwares. There was um, Oracle, Microsoft, and so And um, I couldn't find anything easier, cheaper, and open source. And it was 2014 when I found a Mautic in the US. Hmm. It was a very small software. And I was not sure yeah, if this is really an honest software and what, what um, the steps could be of the software and the roadmap. Uh, so yeah. uh, for, for historical reasons, uh, what, what did more look like at the time? And was it the same thing as today or was it very different for those who never saw the early versions? I would what say important it was, features it, have it, been it, ever added? It, from, the, from the design, it was very similar to today. Um, it had a campaign manager, a very buggy campaign manager, and a very simple um, email editor, and um, yeah, just a content contact maintenance. Yeah. I think that was all. And what was your interaction with the Mordic developers at the time? Um, in the beginning, we had no interaction. I tried it, I would say, for a half year. And 2015, I started my own blog, um, the first German marketing automation blog, and it was called marketingautomationblog.de. <laughs> and um, I had of my the first German Mautic tutorial, and it's, I would say it's, um, it, it must be um, live in the internet. I'm not sure to be honest, because it's not up to date. But maybe you can find it. Yeah, look it up and put it in the show notes uh, just, for, <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> Good idea. Yes, um, yes it's not the, the, the current logic version. Yes, yeah. um, and I, I would. I was. I'm not sure. I have to think about it. When I um, was contacted by the by the founders, I would say in October 2015, mm -hmm. um, and they found my tutorial in German. And they asked me, um, yeah, about the German market, if Mautic is, yeah, is the solution that is usable in Germany. And, um, yeah, we had the first contact via email. And, um, I would say 2000, at the end of 2016 or 2017, I'm not sure, when, um, how is it called in English, the DSGVO? Oh, a GDPR. Yes, the beautiful <laughs> German um, thing here. <laughs> yeah, we had the first discussions in Germany, and um, the founders wanted to interview me to yeah to get some information about that and to get my opinion. And we started uh, yeah the official partnership. So um, I'm an official Mautic partner since then, mm -hmm. at the end of 2016 or beginning of 2017. Yes, and I learned to use Mautic for my customers. Before, it, I used it only for me, for myself, and um, sometimes I recommended it, 
But my topic was um, marketing automation, coaching and mentoring, and not the implementation of software. Mm -hmm. In 2017, I started to you know, implement Modic um, using AWS. And it, yeah, it was a good thing. I earned a lot of money with that. It was the first one. And if you Google Modic in Germany on google.de, you found me, I would say, in, on position two or three. So um, yeah, until today, it's a good thing, all the Modic stuff. So you still support customers yes. with their... Uh, marketing and sales, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And you told me before that that you, for sales you use something different than we all knew, know. Yes. Um, I had a look on HubSpot very early also. I would say 2015 and 2016. And I decided to use it not because I had Nautic before and um, because HubSpot, to be honest, was too expensive to use for me. But I like the, the history, um, the founders, and the idea behind HubSpot. And in um, 2017, I yeah, had some researches, and I found that I could, could use HubSpot in a very special way, in a very cheap way, because I used the free version, mm -hmm. the CRM, for my sales topics. And I connected Nautic via the, um, yeah, the plug-in, I would say it's pre-installed. I'm not sure um, HubSpot, so you can plug and play and use HubSpot as um, as a sales tool. Yeah. And I connected both, and it was very easy. And now I have a separate Sapia integration mm -hmm. for some things that are not connected directly, mm -hmm. and it's really easy to use. I use Matic for all the campaigning stuff. Mm -hmm for the marketing phases and HubSpot for the sales sales phases. So if anything happens during the marketing phase, maybe someone is um, answering an email or yeah gets in contact with us, then Mautic will stop or the campaign will stop and HubSpot will start. Okay, so use it as an ACRM and also a sales automation tool, is that right? Yes, yes. And HubSpot has a nice um, app for my smartphone. Yeah. Not, not. <laughs> and it's yeah for me it's a perfect combination okay nice so you, you do that just for yourself or but also to your clients for your clients i recommend that but i do not implement that i stopped implementing mortic yeah. um, um last year yeah. because it's too complex to maintain all the server stuff on aws and i focused on my mentoring and coaching and i started two other companies in germany so, yeah, it was a question of focus. So the implementation is done by, by partners, basically. Yes. Okay. Yeah, got it. Um, tell us a bit about those other projects that you do. It seems like you, you are a real marketing wizard, multiple projects at a time. One of those is Need.me, and that you told me about at uh, the Marketing Underground show in Berlin, where we met last year. Uh, yeah. yeah, tell us all about Need.me. Yeah, need me. Need with triple E. Um, it was an idea, I would say, I had it five or six years ago. And I worked as a freelancer for Adobe and Microsoft and SAP. And I asked myself all the time, why do you look websites like 30 years ago? The website is like a poster where you can scroll over with, with your device, with your laptop or, or your, yeah, your smartphone. Mm. And it looks every time the same. So... And I asked myself, why does why could a website not um, yeah, not be like more than a um, conversation between people? Mm -hmm. And I started to to research what the, is a conversation um, from for the background. Just um, I studied informatic, computer science, and psychology, so it's mm -hmm. a very special combination of um, of uh, topics. Yes, and I got into all this psychology stuff and I found out what criteria is important to have a good conversation between people. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, looked for a developer and now we have a small team who is developing this and we have three criteria of data that we use 
to make a website more like a conversation and not like a classical website, like a poster. Okay. And it's nothing like a um, chatbot or anything else that have a real conversation. The website looks like all the other websites look. The difference is the um, providing of content. So what we measure is the situation of people. Situation mm -hmm. means the time, the day, the month, the weather outside. Mm -hmm. So, and what I want is to make the visitor feel better than before his visit. Mm -hmm. So one example, if it's cold outside, the website looks warmer. And if it's warm outside, the website looks colder. So mm -hmm. that makes a better feeling. Um, the visitor does not know why he feels better. Yeah, but it's a good feeling and it's connected with the brand or with the website. So that's mm -hmm. criteria number one. The second one is the behavior in the visible area of the screen. And I, and, and that's so the one thing that's very innovative and where we have a patent on. Um, we, yeah, we said a website is only the visible area of the screen and everything invisible. So where you can scroll on is in the future. And that depends on the behavior, on the situation, and the third criteria, what is the perception mm -hmm. of the visitor. So it's very individual. So, and we measure the um, behavior. That means if you, yeah, if you want to buy something and you are not really sure if it's everything safe, the data, if it's the right product, if the price is okay or not. Yeah. So you want to have it, but you're not sure, is this the right offer for me? Mm -hmm. And so much people are, um, yeah, are touching a, a button, for example. They touch it, but they don't click it. Mm -hmm. And nobody is measuring this behavior. And we measure that. Yeah. That means if you touch it and you don't click it, you get in the invisible area. So, I mean, directly below the line. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, an area with testimonials, with product reviews, with reasons that this is the right offer for you. Oh, okay. Cool concept. So, yeah. And the third one, the perception, um, it's, what is the English word for that? For Spiegel or one? Mirror or oh, neurons. Oh. I'm not sure yeah. if this is the right word. Yeah. Yeah. This is a special thing, what we do all the time if we speak with, with each other. So, yeah. we want to be sympathetic and we want to be nice to each other. And we are mirroring yeah. each other. So a website cannot really mirror the visitor. So, but what we can do is we are measuring the perception channel of the person. Mm -hmm. And there are three completely different kinds of perception that people have. The first one is very relational, um, rational. That means we have the people who wants to read text, who want to yeah. get arguments to decide. Mm -hmm. The next one is very visual. He needs to see yeah, pictures, maybe pictures with some text information, mm -hmm. but less text than the rational guy. Mm -hmm. And the third one is very kinesthetic, very emotional. He wants to feel it. He wants to hear yeah. it. He wants to be in it. Yeah. That are the ones who want to like to see videos. Yeah. And we have a scoring in the background that is measuring the behavior with the three different channels. That mm. means we have um, in the visible area of the screen at least one video, at least one yeah, picture slider or anything else, yeah. and at least one larger text box, I would say. Yeah. And depending on the behavior with this three channels, we're providing the content below the line in this, I would so say, Perception channel of the person. Okay, so so in the end, you, you're tr still tr again tr trying to uh, find the best segment for for a person for, to to use the marketing language and uh, act accordingly and 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 very interactively. So you change the invisible invisible part based on the the best guess you have on the segment or the type. Uh, so yes. what 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 role does uh, artificial intelligence play in this? Uh, whole picture yeah we are um, measuring all the data and um, we can use databases from google and aws to get information why people interact how they interact mm -hmm. and we can use this to enrich our data 
and to make it really, yeah, almost true. But that's what we do mm. is the right thing. Okay. So, um, yeah, in the like, future like, we, yes. Is it a bit like like lookalike audiences? <laughs> yes, maybe. Yes, maybe. <laughs> um, it's really difficult to 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 explain. To be honest, okay, because yeah, it's very mind. detailed. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're developing it. Um, now we have a very productive system. Everybody can mm. download it on the WordPress plugin store. Just um, at the moment, only with the Divi Builder. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is only rule based. So there's no artificial intelligence. That's our um, better product. Yeah. But we're not productive, that we don't have in the productive um, area. Yeah, but it's a very, very cool thing. And um, I'm very proud to have it. Mm. Based on based on that experience and uh, looking back back at Mordic, uh, what do you think is the, the most important spot where Mordic would first or should first mo move into a, uh, AI? Because there there are a couple of typical things that people talk about when it comes to marketing and AI, but few people have real practical experience. Is there any anything you can add to the discussion? The most mistake from my perspective is that Mordic is used more than a tool. Um, most people are from a technical background, and that's absolutely okay. Mm. The, the fact is, website visitors, um, receivers of email, are people, they're really human, and they don't want to be um, handled like human. And all the guys with the technical background mm. use, yeah, use Mautic and everything that Mautic provides to... Yeah, to write emails, to build landing pages. And from my perspective, they don't think about enough what is a good communication. And um, in the first step, it's not a question of AI. It's a question of what would I like to get for information for your email, for your websites, that would yeah, be a really good experience for me, that would motivate me to buy anything, to click on the link. Yeah, that's, that's my, my my talking all the time that marketing automation is 20% technology and 80% brains, understanding the customer, coming up with smart ideas and so on, communicating right. Yes, yeah. absolutely true. And AI is the next step. So I would not start with AI. This discussion on what we can improve. The first step is to understand, yeah, that technique is more than technique. Yeah, that's... Uh, True for everyone as of today. Absolutely. Cool. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to, to add, especially when it comes to Mordic, to the Mordic community maybe, or, or the product? It would be perfect to combine Neatme and Mordic. Neatme on the, on the websites and Mordic as, as the form mm -hmm. yeah, at the end of the website, for example. Yeah. And to, to combine both. And... Um, yeah, we make uh, an official scientific A-B test now, and it's amazing um, which numbers we get, which KPIs we can measure. That's, yeah, cool, amazing. Yeah. We have um, a factor of 1 to 11 in conversion rates in some cases. Ooh. So, are, are you using some, some larger B2C websites to, to test that or...? or? Where do you test it? It's a B2B it? website, and we're mm. measuring the um, conversion, the call to action, mm. to, uh, um, yeah, to make it the online meeting. So, oh, okay, yeah. and it's yeah, it's incredible what happened there. And yeah, we are awesome. now we are in the middle of the beta test, so it's too early to um, to promise anything, mm. but it looks very very good, and um, yeah, it's free to use for everyone. And everyone can combine it, Mordic and NeatMe and HubSpot, for example, to <laughs> yeah. make it full. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe maybe one could even think about a deeper integration one day. Yeah, so let, let's keep in touch, uh, work on that. And uh, I, I'm I'm absolutely fascinated by, by it. And I can't wait to see where you are in a year from now or even later. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for today. Where can people find you online best? You have multiple URLs. Which are the best? Which are the best social media channels and so on? Yeah, I'm using, I would say, almost every social media channel. Just my name, Sebastian Eisenberger. Mm -hmm. um, or the Need Me website, n triple e d dot m e. 
Yeah. It's in English and German and French. And um, yeah, feel free to contact me to um, visit my website to um, click like and everything you could do <laughs> for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh Thanks. Once again, thank you so much, Sebastian Eisenberger, for your time today and for the insights you gave us. Uh, cool to talk to someone who, who was so early up with Mordek and who's so innovative still. Um, yeah, keep going. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thank you, Aki. Bye. Good stuff. So, what's what's what else is going on in the Mordek world? What is coming up? First, I would like to remind everybody that on mordek.org/events there is a comprehensive list of things that are going on yeah. and that list is growing nicely we have new Mordic camps and meetups coming up like uh, in, in japan which is actually the thix oh already yeah that's it, uh, nice cool and we have a brand new one in in lagos nigeria Ooh. thanks to our friend toby yeah shout out to toby yeah uh so that's scheduled for april i guess mm-hmm um, we, have, we have a proposal for a new one in Los Angeles and, and more. So that's really nice to see that blossom. And by the way, we now also have a uh, meetup.com pro account mm -hmm. thanks to Acquia. And uh, so that's another place to look for the regular format called Meetup as opposed to the Morticamp, which is a one-timer or at least a certain point in time event. Then the community meetings, which are so far weekly for every single team. There's a bit of tweaking going on there. At least in one team, we're now changing to a fortnightly or bi-weekly rhythm and are also tweaking the times a little bit and, and the rhythm between the as asynchronous and uh, the live meeting format. Mm -hmm. So there's more experience now and we're adjusting that as we go, which is good. And also there's new people in the teams and a uh, lot of movement everywhere. So, uh, well, I'm, I'm happy. Um, speaking of that, we have a possible date now for the upcoming community council plus team sprints, Ooh. which is uh, like a follow-up format for the community summit or a Mordic summit mm -hmm. that you and I visited in November. Yeah. Um, there will be something in the week after Easter my best guess is that it's going to happen in Prague mm. and there will be both a council and another team sprint one or two day event uh, around that. So if you are in a team already or are considering joining a team, block that in your calendar and you'll have a good time there. Oh yeah, sure. And then the other thing we talked about uh, in the last Morticast is the Morticon, the worldwide conference, which will most certainly happen in November 18th or 19th location. Still unclear. I still think it is going to be in North America and uh, hopefully we'll have that fixed soon. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> But uh, at least the, the week is really clear now and, um, and the days almost. There may be surrounding events like, like team sprints as well. So yeah, why not just block the entire week? That's the best tip I have. <laughs> So that's Morticon, and I think that's it for the week two. For everybody in, in Europe, uh, stay safe. Good luck with the, with the hurricane. And I talk to you in 14 days. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.